Hello and welcome to Academic Language and Learning, a service area of learning, teaching and student engagement directorate at James Cook University. In part three, we are going to have a discussion of some of the issues surrounding IELTS. First, we're going to begin with the research. So it's very clear from the research that IELTS cannot actually measure academic literacies. Rather, it is a uh, general basic skill level. So you will find that students who are entering on a 6 or a 6.5, although they may be able to communicate to a limited level, they're not going to have the discipline-specific language which they need to complete their courses. They're often not initiated into their community of practice, and this means they don't know the languages or, or the methodologies around a specific discipline. This means that they're often unprepared to enter university, and so academics and support staff need to be aware of this and students themselves need to understand that they are not specifically proficient in their degree area on entry but it's something that they need to keep working at this is a problem because often students think well I'm in the course I don't have to worry about my language anymore another problem that may arise is that students may have an understanding of general writing and formatting but they won't have a specific knowledge of what's required in their discipline so this needs to be made explicit to them uh, by the academics and support staff. A surprising result from research by Birrell was that one third of international students could not achieve a 6.0 IELTS score on exited of a university degree. This is important because it suggests that student language skills are atrophying during higher education study. Another finding was that writing skills of these students may show very little improvement because universities do not focus on teaching writing skills but rather focus on content. The same study also found that the speaking skills of students were completely dependent on the socialization. So they're not using the speaking skills in the classroom, but in the social context outside. So if they're living in a house with people from their own language group, they're less likely to improve their speaking skills. An interesting finding of the Victorian Ombudsman was that in the university sector, soft marking is clearly going on. And it was suggested this is because universities do not provide enough support for international students. And partly this is due to the fact that English proficiency is not seen as a priority. However, employers are concerned with the lack of graduate skills. Another finding is that students very rarely take on optional language classes. When they do, these classes have a very high attrition rate. Uh, and better methodology is a collaborative approach to target improved language skills for English additional language uh, students. So collaborative means across academics, professionals and support staff. Further research has found that academic language and learning advisors uh, supporting students can be helpful. So let's have a brief discussion about TEXA. TEXA has widely acknowledged that across the Australian tertiary education sector, many students are, to a large extent, unprepared for university study. This is evidenced by difficulties in meeting academic requirements such as critical analysis and essay writing and in communicating effectively in oral and written English. This is not only the case for international students but also local students of English and non-English speaking backgrounds. It's important that we pay attention to this area for our course accreditation. Accreditation Standard 1.2 makes it clear that there needs to be development of the graduate attributes and we know from the research we need to provide for appropriate development of key graduate attributes in students uh, including English language proficiency and we know from the research that we've just discussed that this is not occurring Australia-wide. A standard 3.2 is that the higher education provider ensures that students are sufficiently competent in the English language. In theory, this is done through the IELTS entry test, although we can see from the level of output to achieve a 6 that this may be problematic for some courses. And course accreditation standard 5.6 states that students who complete the course of study have attained key graduate attributes, including an appropriate level of English language proficiency. So in summary, the university sector in Australia has about 21% international students. IELTS operates as the gatekeeper, but we need to remember that an entry score for IELTS does not mean a student is proficient in language or in subject-specific discourses. And this means that we need to have language supports integrated into our courses, not just to support these students, but to meet the TEXA accreditation requirements. 
If you would like some further information, you can go to our website. There's some teaching strategies for academics to use in supporting EAL students. If you have any specific questions, feel free to send us an email at the Learning Centre.